Hi everyone, The Lone Wolf here and welcome back to the Sunday Recap, my weekly vlog where I talk a little bit about my last week in games. As always, we'll start with some EVE Online and I've probably played around average when it comes to EVE Online. I think I had a pretty good week. I did a bit of exploration, I did a bit of mining and the blueprint copy business, especially in the la last part of the week, uh, definitely took back uh, up. So there was quite a few sales happening there. I had to go back to Jita twice this weekend to refill my contract. I think it's the announcement, of course, of the expansion, uh, which I think is going to be on everyone's mind. It's already coming on October 24th, so that is actually sooner than most people will have expected. And I think that's why people are currently scrambling for um, blueprint copies of, uh, of parts of structures and of course the PI we also saw during Eve talk that the structure related PI is going up quite substantially so um, the next few weeks I think I'm just going to go into preparation mode for EVE Online because I am planning to move to Yona uh, back to Galente space when the expansion comes so that's gonna be like uh, probably one to almost two months, no, one to one and a half months sooner uh, than I first expected. I still have to do a little bit of moving of some ships and some stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, again, uh, I am going to, uh, to often uh, remind you guys that uh, that will be the date when I take down the structures in detail. So if you're living there, please uh, make sure that you take your, uh, you make your preparations uh, for that move because uh, normally if uh, if my if my theory holds up if everything that CCP has announced so far uh, holds up then uh, they will uh, refund us or, or basically give us back uh, the rigs for reprocessing and uh, I was gifted a tech 2 rig for Isaac or uh, for the Citadel and so of course that one would best be placed in a medium refinery after the uh, after the expansion because that's where you'll get the best yield and so that's basically what I'm planning to do at first uh, once the rig is made available I'll take down the structures and start to work on a medium refinery as well so I can give you guys the best yield but then it's gonna be in Yona in uh, Galente space and there of course I am looking forward to uh, that new content at CCP's planning which uh, should be quite interesting uh, around helping the empires with resource gathering i do wonder what they've got cooked up for us there and of course for co incorporated i think it makes a little bit more sense that we try to help the galente empire rather than the mr empire so our stint in detail was more of a, an opportunity to explore the new structures to uh, get some trade relations going uh, nearby and things like that lore wise um, but now it's it's time to go back to Galente space and uh, to see how we can help out the Galente Federation. Next up, we have some Heroes of the Storm. So that's been quite a roller coaster, I have to be honest. Uh, at first, it's been quite difficult to complete the quest because as some of you guys know, uh, I was having some problems with my PC uh, surrounding my power supply. I had constant crashes, especially in Heroes of the Storm. Uh, for some reason, that seems to be a little bit harder on the graphics card than most other games that I play. And so at the start of every game, I would just crash out. Uh, I would do my best to at least complete the daily quests, which I managed to do. And then early next week, a new power supply came in. At at first I, I took a look at my PC and there was like a lot of dust surrounding the power supply so I cleaned everything out a little bit and saw if it, if it still worked but it crashed right away so I had no choice I had to replace my power supply unit which I did uh, it took a little bit of work I'm not all that used to uh, working with hardware especially on these PCs but since the warranty was over anyways I had nothing to lose so I opened everything up and uh, replaced the power supply successfully so far no more crashes and uh, i've actually been able to get back into heroes of the storm and now i am i'm basically back up and running i caught up a little bit i did a couple of extra games early on just to make sure that we wouldn't crash uh, so so i really pushed uh, a little bit on the heroes of the storm front and uh, at this point we're basically back uh, one to two games a day to uh, to keep the daily quest going so uh, it's been going quite nicely I enjoy Heroes of the Storm myself I almost have uh, 30,000 gold saved up so I've got room for a couple of heroes but I think I'll just wait for the patch uh, where the the new hero Keltuzat will come out because he interests me quite a lot I'm mostly uh, I, I mostly prefer ranged heroes and so he sounds quite interesting and uh, after that we'll see which other heroes I might be interested to buy but it's still a very interesting game 
um, but you, you should try uh, not to get into frustrated mode and so with the crashes unfortunately I got a bit of a taste for that because that meant that I left a couple of games early and so I was put in the queue with other levers uh, or, or other people that were disconnected in their games and yeah the mood even in quick play uh, is quite a bit different there so uh, I have to be honest when it comes to uh, Heroes of the Storm you have to be in the right mood you have to know your own limits to the number of games uh, because uh, some of those people were, were definitely uh, not all that positive during the games when when things didn't go that well so um, yeah it's it's that was an interesting experience I think you'll get a lot more of that in ranked as well so for me uh, yeah just quick play and and finishing off the quests uh, is basically uh, my right tempo to be able to keep enjoying Heroes of the Storm. After that we have some Guild Wars 2 that has been going really well as well. Uh, I've been enjoying my time in Guild Wars 2 so far uh, quite a lot. I've in fact spent most of my time uh, in Guild Wars 2 especially compared to the other games. And uh, I still have a couple of videos coming uh, but uh, I am actually level 60. I am in World vs World and while yeah, it never felt really grindy to get there. Uh, in World vs World um, it's, it's a little tricky. I have to get to know that I think. Uh, have finding commanders not all that intuitive for me uh, finding out which battleground you should take in order to find most activity not always that clear either but uh, you do get decent rewards uh, when it comes to the uh, battleground so once you're once you're in world versus world and you're actually actively with the zerg yeah you can see uh, rewards come in very often and so that doesn't feel all too grindy either one hour to two hours of, of world versus world is definitely uh, enjoyable if you can find some action of course and uh, i got something like called a tome of knowledge from that which gives you a level right away that's pretty cool uh, i think that's going to help me level up a little bit more quickly towards level 80 uh, but so far basically guild wars 2 is a game that i'm managing to combine with eve online it's it's basically casual enough it's fast enough it's it's uh, consistent enough that the grind doesn't keep escalating to higher and higher needed uh, time numbers and as a result uh, yeah guild wars 2 uh, definitely really uh, an awesome game i've already spent quite a bit of time in that and so maybe i won't buy the expansion on the day of launch uh, because there is just so much coming uh, in, in September and October of course with the EVE Online expansion with Valkyrie uh, I'm also having one eye on, on Destiny 2 maybe I'll, I'll try that as well which I think is coming like early October or something like that as well for the PC so there's maybe a little bit too much to do uh, but uh, I think that, that what I will manage to do for Guild Wars 2 is to keep playing a little bit of World versus World uh, keep my character slowly bringing up to level 80 and then and hopefully by the by the time that like Christmas comes around or, or, or there's like a first sale there then I'll probably pick up just both expansions and, uh, and 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 go from there so that's that's I think my plan with Guild Wars 2 but yeah King Casual it definitely earns that title and it's a lot of fun uh, in my opinion uh, seeing that you do make progress and and that you can continue to make progress without having to put uh, some some extreme number of hours or anything like that in there which there is room for that you know there's going to be raiding tough dungeons and, and if you want to get to the higher ranks of world vs world you can spend hundreds of hours in there but you don't have to to feel like you can uh, be a part of all of it so that's that's really nice and uh, guild wars 2 is, is definitely a recommendation if you're looking for something extra to do or you're looking for a time where you need a bit more downtime and, and you need to be able to just keep doing your own thing a bit more relaxed uh, then uh, yeah absolutely you can you can look into guild wars 2 for an mmo experience that way and finally i also played a fourth game this week so this was actually a key that was given to me as, as a sort of a, a preview copy of x morph a pretty interesting game it's a tower defense game with top down shooter mechanics as well um, so i've played through the game on easy mode just to take a look at it i personally do enjoy tower defense games but i enjoy them for a different reason than what xmorth is uh, is doing i enjoy them because they're basically decently relaxed in the sense that you can just build up your towers find a good defensive mechanic and then just watch the enemy uh, crush themselves 
on, on your defenses, which I think is pretty cool and it, it doesn't need to be too engaging that way. But for Exmorph, it's quite di different because your uh, spaceship, the, the, the ship that you're flying, is very, very important in the defense and can really make a big difference when you're leaving gaps or when the uh, when the enemy comes with their, with their final really big waves. And so as a result, uh, this one, it's a tower defense game, but it, it's not going to be a relaxing experience. It's actually a very hectic and intense experience, which is in and of itself not bad because the missions um, are pretty short uh, you, you don't have to spend hours in that mode and in between you do have that downtime where you can plan your defenses and, and, and get ready for, for the next waves depending on the information that you get on the map so for me this was actually a very enjoyable uh, little game uh, just something to do in between and uh, everything worked quite nicely no crashes, no problems uh, technically that worked, uh, worked uh, perfectly uh, for me and uh, yeah some interesting bosses as well some some pretty cool stuff uh, that happens throughout uh, throughout the entire uh, storyline you could say of Exmorph and I've, I've got like a first impressions video of that coming next week as well uh, but um, you know maybe I, I'm not sure what the price point is at this point so maybe not exactly a full price game I don't see that much replayability in it but definitely a pretty cool game to keep an eye on maybe uh, on, on like a steam sale or something like that you could definitely have a few um, dozen hours no maybe let's say a dozen hours or something like that uh, if you also want to try some missions on, on the harder difficulty levels, we can definitely uh, have like a dozen hours out of that. And so, pretty cool game, uh, definitely a very interesting concept and, and technically and visually it was done uh, really well in my opinion. So, uh, that was the final game for this week guys. Thank you very much for watching and as always, I'll see you next time. Attacking aliens.